Okay, today we're gonna to be going over how to make a, a basic Kydex holster. I have a video that I'll put here on how to, on all the different tools you'll need for a Kydex holster, um, and in another video here on the holster press itself and how to make that. Um, as, and those videos have links to the different various things, but essentially you're gonna need a Kydex, um, some masking tape, Chicago style screws, your clip, some sort of uh, Kydex holster press. I highly recommend you use a press rather than, um, and you can just make it yourself, it's pretty cheap and easy, rather than just kind of smashing it and standing on it with, uh, between your foam. You need a, a Dremel to be with a cutoff disc um, and ideally a polishing uh, item as well to smooth out the edges after you cut it all up. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna take our gun and we're gonna put scotch, um, not scotch tape, we're gonna put masking tape all over it. That's gonna give us a little bit of tolerance on top of the gun, as well as keep the gun from getting too scratched up with while we're working, uh, too beat up um, while we're working with it. Okay, for a basic kydex holster like this, sometimes you, you honestly don't have to do this because you can loosen up. Um, however, anytime you have controls that are further up, if you don't put something to create some sort of a channel for them, um, then it can, the kydex can pinch a little bit hard. Um, on something where these barely stick up, it likely wouldn't be an issue. However, I like to still get some, like a popsicle stick and then tape over it for, uh, this is slide log, that's a disassembly lever. Uh, for it to travel in the kydex holster also with the sight depending on how tight you wrap it if you don't wrap your kydex uh, uh, around the top super tight it doesn't really matter um, but if you do want to wrap it tight uh, then you want to do something to create a channel for this as well so all this in here is actually just a small file that i had lying around that i just cut in half um, and then put right there Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's um, done being taped up, uh, at least the first stage. So I have a channel for my um, uh, mag release and then a channel for, uh, this is for the slide lock as well as um, the disassembly lever. Uh, as far as the trigger goes, you don't have to really tape over it. Uh, well, you have to tape over it, but you don't have to do any special special supports. The kydex will form in a little bit, but that's what's gonna give it that nice little click. Um, when it when you slide it in so every good holster it should have i'll show you the that nice that click that's what's going to give you that okay the next thing you want to do is put tape around the magazine and then insert uh the uh, mag into the mag well uh, the biggest reason for this is um, i've never had it happen to me but i've heard of it happening where the pressure from the kydex uh, holster press and the warm kydex can collapse your mag well i've never seen it happen but somebody once commented that it could and you know it's not going to hurt you at all to do this so i i do it okay so it just has one thin layer to give it a little bit extra extra tolerance on it and we're just going to insert that it is a little bit stiff. It can stick out a little bit because we don't really care what's happening here because we're gonna end up cutting off the Kydex holster anyway to expose the grip so you can pull it out. We also don't really care what's kind of happening here at the back because again, the Kydex holster, we're gonna cut away any of this when we're done so we can pull it out. So if popsicle sticks or whatever are sticking out the back, I really don't care about that. Okay, the next thing that you're gonna do is you need to figure out where you're going to put um, a standoff to be able to allow the Chicago style screws to sit in there. So to show you what I'm talking about is this one has this standoff right there. And to do this one, I use, this is just a piece of wood that I cut off and then I put under the Kydex uh, right where I wanted. Um, I'm gonna have to use a bigger one for because this one's gonna use these. So I'm gonna have to put, and I'm gonna put two of them side by side. So I'm essentially just gonna make a bigger square. Okay, so here's my little uh, piece of wood that I cut just off of two by four. Um, so for these, you can see where the Chicago style screws will sit on the other side. Uh, you could actually make this longer and then drill a couple holes and allow you to even adjust up and down. Um, or even side to side or whatever you want, you can you can customize that a little bit. So figuring out where to put this is gonna be one of the most important parts of figuring out this Kydex holster um, because it's gonna determine how far back it sits, it's gonna determine how deep it sits. Um, it's it, it, it determines quite a bit. Um, it also is gonna determine whether it's a right hand or left hand draw. So I am right handed, so and carrying strong side, I'm gonna want it on this side. If you're left handed, you'll wanna put it on this side. Um, 
And if you're putting on this side, depending where you put it, you may actually not need these channels, but for right-handed, I'm gonna leave those there and I'm gonna put it on this side. Now for this style of clip, uh, I, you can see I put it relatively high uh, on, the, on the gun. And so that way my belt line sits right here uh, and it gives me plenty of space to get my fingers under it. Now for this one, I'm gonna want my belt line approximately the same location, but you can see that's gonna put this pretty far down. So um, on the gun that's just below where this, um, this hex wasp is, so that's gonna be approximately right there. So that means I'm gonna to wanna to put this clear down here now we can drill these holes such that it's going to give us a little bit of an adjustment and i'll show you that when we get to that point but this will determine uh, the angle at which your holster is going to sit okay so i got this all taped up so this is ready to go so this is ready to go into the kydex holster press with our heated up kydex so the next st step is to figure out what kydex you're using this kydex happens to be 80 thousandths thick it is black it comes in all sorts of colors and patterns and whatever you want um, that the rough part side is going to be the outside, the smooth is going to be the inside. So this is where you're gonna figure out where it's going to um, kinda end. Now it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we're gonna cut it out. Um, I like to have the kydex on the inside go all the way up to the tippy top. And so when it forms, it's gonna form all around this and we're gonna end up cutting it out. So um, I like to put it all the way up to this very edge here which means it's going to be approximately half of this Kydex sheet. So the nice thing about simple Kydex holsters for Micro 9s is you can see it's it's like perfectly half the sheet, which means you can actually get two holsters, which is nice because if the first one you botch, then you have another um, half. Although I recommend getting multiple Kydex sheets anyway, because hey, you never know when you want to make more uh, Kydex holsters. Okay, so now I got everything prepped. So I have my Kydex holster press open. I have my vise open, ready to accept the holster press when it's ready to go. I have these clamps set open, so when it's done, I'm just ready to roll. So as far as the oven settings, I have it set to 360. You, uh, it recommends you anywhere from 300 to 375. I prefer 360, kind of a little bit on the hotter end. You can do 350, 360, that's what I recommend. Um, as far as the time that you're gonna put this in, um, typically the rule of thumb is approximately one second per mil of thickness. Um, so this is gonna be about 80 seconds. Um, I'm gonna put it in rough side down so I can just pull it out, fold it around the gun and go with it. Okay, so it's done. Okay, you can see how floppy that is. Put that right there. I'm gonna take this and then we're gonna pull it relatively tight as we bend around the top of the gun. We're gonna make sure we wanna get all the way up there Push it in, take this, close that. We're gonna take our clamps, all working relatively quickly. Put one there, put one here. Double clamp the heck down out of that. And then put it in the vise, clamp it down even more. Okay, so you wanna wait approximately five to 10 minutes or so before uh, you undo this. To let it cool, the last thing you want is to undo it and have your kydex still be floppy. Oh man, a little bit of pressure on that. Okay, so that is what it looks like. And right now it still doesn't look like much but we are going to do a lot of work on this to get it to where we want it to be. Although you can really see that where you place things does certainly matter because see that one, I got a touch off on the angle. It won't matter, it'll work just fine, but I did. And then same with this one, maybe just a hair off as well. And you can see obviously you couldn't get the gun in there, but we're gonna trim this up quite a bit. Okay, so now that we got this, we need to figure out where we're gonna cut. I like to have another holster, or even you, if you don't have another holster, you can just take a have a picture of one from Amazon or whatever, and you're gonna kind of draw, I like to just draw with a pencil where I'm gonna end up cutting. Um, and just keep in mind, you can always remove more material, but it's really hard to put back on. So with that principle in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this up. 
Okay, so this is what it looks like for now. So I've kind of mimicked it off this one. So you can see that I, I have enough to cover the trigger here, enough for my Chicago style screws right there. Um, obviously leaving where my clips, my the clip will go. Um, and then this will completely stick out so you have something to grab on when you're drawing. The other side is very comparable. Same, cover the trigger, enough to be exposed here. A little bit here to cover, to make sure I have my magazine release covered. Um, and then all the way up here, so I don't, I'm not, I don't, the gun does not directly touch anywhere on my skin. So if I'm outdoor shooting and it gets hot or whatever, uh, that's not gonna affect me. So that's kind of what it looks like at first. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, um, just out, cut it with a Dremel and a cutting disc. Uh, and then I'll go from there to see if I wanna remove any more material. So really not too bad. Um, nice tr trigger coverage there. I probably will end up removing a little bit of this material after I get my Chicago style, style screws in there. If you did have an optic one, you could just want, would cut down a little bit more here and back up, similar to how I did on this one. When you're cutting, you do want to make sure that you, any like cuts like this where the disc isn't long enough, you don't want to cut into the material you want to keep. You want to make sure your cuts go more into the material that's junk. So out like this one or out like that one, uh, because it's really hard to polish those, those ones off. So um, the next stage on this one is to sand all these. So grab a dermal sanding or a bit uh, wheel, and then we're gonna sand it all off. Okay, so this is what it looks like. You wanna do the majority of the work to smooth it out with the sanding wheel, and later we'll polish the edges and make them nice and smooth, but the sanding wheel is gonna do 90% of the work. So now we're gonna do these uh, clips. So um, like I had it before, I want it to, to cant just a little bit forward in my, in my pants, so I don't wanna go straight up. I wanna do a little bit back, cause that'll give a little bit of a cant. And that was set up when I put the tape on in that block. Uh, and then I'm just gonna put these in line right about like that. Okay, when you're drilling these, make sure you don't go through the other side. Great time to use a drill press, but if you're like me, then you're just gonna rock a Ryobi drill. Okay, so now we're gonna mount these. So I like to take this uh, larger end, not the screw end, stick up to there. Then you're gonna take one of these little bushing deals and put it on there. You put that guy on there and then screw these on. Um, just a tip, if these aren't fat enough for you, you can take um, like some fuel line, uh, some like, like stuff that you'd run to like a carburetor on like a small engine, um, and you can get make just cut off a bit of that and it makes it fatter. Okay, so now I got the clips in there. So the next part is to drill the holes for the two Chicago style screws that are gonna allow me to adjust the amount of tension that it gives on it. So right now you'll see it just slips in really easy, loosey goosey, we don't want that. So uh, these ones, you don't wanna put clear out here on the edge because it won't give you enough tension. I left quite a bit of material here so it would give me some play. Um, I'll likely end up cutting a, quite a bit of that off once I find out I don't need it. So with the gun in place, you're gonna figure out kinda of close so you can see you can see in there, there's quite a bit of space there that will allow me to ch adjust the tension quite a bit. So I wanna put it close to the trigger, but not so close that I'm gonna drill into it or have any issues with the trigger guard. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's about done. So I put those in there and adjusted the tension on them. Unfortunately, I didn't have, I don't have quite enough of these larger Chicago style screws, so I'll end up swapping these out for the nicer ones. Um, so I put in these junky little ones that I have. Don't get these. Uh, these are the ones that I do have that I really like, um, but I don't have quite enough of them. But so for now, placeholders. Um, so it, I adjusted the tension there, so it grips pretty good now. So it is a decent pull, but you get that nice click when it goes in. So a little tension, 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 and there you go. So this whole, this will hold it all day long. Um, I do have a little bit of extra material here, so I'm gonna kind of cut this out and curve it a little bit nicer. Um, but other than that, this holster is pretty much done except for polishing up the edges and then getting obviously nicer screws there. Okay, so there's the completed holster right there. Yeah, so with these style clips, you can tuck in your shirt. Now I don't have a mirror, so I don't really know how well, how good that looks, but uh, it's just sticking over the belt. You kind of see it in the GoPro. So you can tuck in your shirt. Oh, you just have a little clip there. And just like normal, pull it up, draw. Okay, this last step is completely not necessary, but you can actually go and kind of polish these edges just so they're a little bit smoother. Um, so to do that, you're gonna get some sort of polished. Um, and so then just take a polishing wheel. 
Okay guys, so there you have it. Um, this holster is now complete. I even polished the edges and everything. You know, it's a little bit hard to tell, but it makes them nice and smooth. Um, use a lower RPM on your Dremel, by the way, when you're polishing, uh, or else it makes a huge mess. Anyway, so there you go. Um, the steel metal clips there. I'll, I will replace these Chicago screws with nicer ones, but for now. Uh, okay guys, if you wanna know how to make a fancier holster, I did a video on that that I'll put up here. Um, and if you have any other questions or comments on how to make a holster, please put it in the comments section below. As always, guys, thanks for watching.